Johnson Wax Program. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's self-polishing glow coat present Marion and Jim Jordan as Pippa McGee and Molly with Donald Novis, the Four Notes, and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Hallelujah. Attention car owners. Another new labor-saving product is now offered to you by the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat. The name of this new product is Johnson's Car New. C-A-R-N-U. It's a double-action, cleaner and wax polish all in one. The job it does is little less than miraculous. Car New saves you time and work. You simply can't compare its fast action with the old, difficult methods of car polishing. If your car is now foggy, streaked, and dirty... Car New will quickly take away all the ugly film. Give it a dazzling mirror-like polish that will amaze you. This new double-duty liquid polish goes on in a hurry. Dries almost immediately to a white powder. Wipe off the powder with a clean cloth, and there stands your car with a dazzling wax polish. A car your family will be proud to ride in. You can easily do the job in an hour. And believe me, you'll call it an hour well spent. Car New both cleans and wax polishes in one simple operation. Buy a can of Johnson's Car New without delay at a filling station, auto supply store, garage, or from your regular wax dealer. You'll soon be saying with thousands of car owners, your car looks like new when you use Car New. Mr. Old 
old-timer, not today. <laughs> she says, no, we don't want any old-timer. Personally, I hate to lose dignity by arguing with a hunk of candy, but it never agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny. But that ain't the way I hear it. <laughs>
so beautifully, I bet there ain't a dry dock in the house. <laughs> well, I better get them cigars and hurry home. Molly's, prob Molly's probably kind of nervous on account of them escaping. Whoops, I'm sorry, sis. I didn't see you coming. Well, look where you're going there, Skippy. Uh -oh. Can't a girl go roller skating without everybody bumping into her? Huh? One side there. Let me by. <laughs> Ain't you a little old and brittle to be zipping around on them bunion Buicks? What? <laughs> I don't know about that, Shorty. I gotta keep in training for next winter. In training? Yeah, I'm a goalie on the hockey team. And golly, what a goalie! Let me by there! Whoopee! <laughs> Gal, for a hockey team of that, I can just hear the sizzle when that red-hot mama hits the ice. <laughs> well, I... Oh, hi, Harpo. Oh, I see you got your firecrackers. Yeah, as well assortments, too. Let's see them. Oh, they're just ordinary firecrackers. I guess I told you what I wanted them for. You see, whenever I start to tell one of my customers about car new, say, Fibber, get your face out of this bag with that lighted cigar. Oh, okay, Harpo. Well, when I talk to my customers about car new, I say, car new, that remarkable new Johnson product, is as easy to apply as a match to a bunch of firecrackers. <laughs> <laughs> Must have dropped a spark in there. Yeah, they've exploded. They've exploded the old theory that you have to wear yourself out to get a beautiful polish on your car. Why, nothing annoys... Annoys a car owner more than a dingy, dusty car. And with car new, everyone reports... Reports that it's sensationally easy to use. You just apply Johnson's car new over the clean surface of your car, and bingo! Bingo! There's your car with a gleaming salesroom wax polish. I tell you, folks, Johnson's car new is destined to be the most pop, uh, pop, uh, pop, uh, popular automobile polish on the market. Excuse me, Pepper. I got to run back and get some more firecrackers. <laughs> I think he's the guy who used to tell me I'd get pinched someday for shooting off my mouth inside the city limits. <laughs> Uh-oh, here's a cigar store. Oh, hi, Amory. How are you stocked up on them old McGee smokeroos? You are still on to me for the last hundred cigars, McGee. Okay. How much? A dollar and a quarter. <laughs> dollar and a quarter, eh? Okay, here you are. Give me another two hundred. Say, did you hear about them convicts escaping? What'd they do, dig a tunnel? They tried that and gave it up. They dug a tunnel 500 feet long and came up in the first national bank. None of them had an account there, so they had to go back. That's too bad. 200 feet south, and they'd have come up in the laundry and made a clean getaway. <laughs> I understand they're pretty tough characters, eh, Maury? Well, I guess so. At least they didn't post no cops in the woods in case they stopping to pick wildflowers. <laughs> Speaking of wildflowers, I hope these cigars are as strong as my last ones. You got them ready for me, Maury? Sure. Will you take them with you, or shall I give them the address and let them walk over? <laughs> That's okay. Let them walk over. But you better wait till dark. All they got on is their wrappers. Oi. Come <laughs> yeah. on, Maury. Might not be a bad idea at that to hurry home and keep an eye on things. I guess I better get... Oh, how do you do, Mr. McGee? Oh, hi, Uppy. <laughs> Hey, what you doing in front of a cigar store? This ain't one of your hangouts, is it, Uppy? Mr. McGee, please, what a horrid insinuation. I was merely walking past on my way to the ladies' club. We're rehearsing for our annual play, and I am playing the title role. Oh, is that so? Yes. <laughs> well, what is it this year, Uppy? Dead end? Er, no, that's... <laughs> Oh, I know. I'll bet you do the washcloth bit in Angels with Dirty Faces. Oh, not at all, Mr. McGee. No, no, no. We are presenting Snow White and the Six Dwarfs. Seven Dwarfs, wasn't it, Uppy? Yes, yes. But when uh, Mrs. Bingham Boynton simply refused to play the part of Seppi, we can't understand it. Gladys has always been so willing before. <clears throat> well, maybe she didn't think the part was fat enough for her. <laughs> so you're going to be Snow White, are you, Uppy? What are you going to do for a glass coffin? Oh, that's very simple, really, Mr. McGee. Mr. Smith in the delicatessen is loaning us a glass showcase. Oh, oh do I? I do hope I shall be able to go through with it until the prince rescues me. It simply reeks of ham, you know. Who, the prince? Oh, no, 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 Mr. McGee. <laughs> Oh, well, I must be getting on now. Oh, it's quite warm, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'll say 
head is up. If I'd earn a two-dollar pistol. <laughs> I kind of worked up a sweat and said, Please, Mr. McGee, a gentleman never, um, uh, horses sweat. Men perspire. And women glow. <laughs> and I simply must be glowing. Uh, I mean, glowing. <laughs> Good old Uppy. Some of them club women remind me of a dollar alarm clock. Full of good work, sound awful busy, and never quite on time. <laughs> I'll see. What was I going to do here? Well, oh. for scream's sake, Fizzer, what are you doing standing around on the street like a fragrant without any home? Just come downtown to get some cigars, Nick, but i got to go right back home. Say, I'm just meeting Mr. Wilscott down the street. Oh, you did, eh? Sure, and he's having a big bag full of fire crackles, torpedoes, pin whistles, sky rackets, and Roman candlesticks. <laughs> He's going to celebrate in the Declaration of Independence push a little prima shortly, isn't he? <laughs> oh, he's giving them away for premiums. You going away for the fourth, Nick? No, Fizzer. I think I'm staying here because my little boy, Demetrios, is being personally selected to make a recitation of a patriotic poetry. Oh. <laughs> What's he going to recite, Nick? The recitation he's going to give is a very famous poetry which the name of it is being The Middle of the Night Ride of Paul Revolver. <laughs> It is going something like this. Listen, my squeegees, and get a load of a man who is galloping down the road. Oh, never mind, Nick. I'm familiar with that form, and i got to get home. Molly's worried about them escaped convicts. Oh, but, Fizzer, every good United States of America citizen should have some refreshments for his memory of this great poetry. Oh. One if by land, and two if by sea, and three if by railroad. It's okay with me. <laughs> Hardly a man is now alive, and if he is, he's more than 75. Who remembers that famous push day and year? Say, Fisher, would you like a glass of beer? <laughs> no, thanks, Nick. I told you I had to hurry home because... One I'll... for the money and two for the show. And Paul Revolver was ready to go. When he hung up a signal in the steeple, and Paul was watching. He was pretty smart people. <laughs> Please, Nick, I can't... To every middle-sized village and farm, the Redskins are coming. He gave the alarm. It's a good thing he did, too. I would be just too bad. And George Washington is the first president we ever had. <laughs> oh, that is a wonderful poetry, Fisher. And it is teaching us a big lesson, too. That horseback rides is just going to show that there has been more than one patriotic canter in our history. <laughs> well, strong, Fisher. More than one patriotic canter. Take it, Billy. Jonah was a man got a word from the Lord To go and preach the gospel to a sinful land He got on a ship and he tried to get away And he ran into a storm in the middle of the sea For the Lord he made the wave just to roll so high The ship began to sink and they all began to cry They pulled old Jonah out of the hole And they chucked him in the water just to lighten up the load Now the Lord made a whale long and wide Lord, Lord, wasn't that a fish And he swallowed up Jonah hair and hide Lord, Lord, wasn't that a fish Jonah started to pray in the belly of the whale Lord, Lord, wasn't that a fish He repented of his sins like a man in jail Lordy, Lord, wasn't that a fish dee 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 Jonah must have been a bad man, must have been a sinner. Lordy, Lord, wasn't that a fish when the whale got him down? He didn't like the dinner. Lord, Lord, wasn't that a fish? Da 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 He swam around the ocean, sick as could be. Lord, Lord, wasn't that a fish? After three days, whoop, he had to set him free. Lord, Lordy, but wasn't that a fish? The whale spit Jonah out on dry land. Like a righteous man, oh Lord, Lord, wasn't that a fish? Then people quit the sins when they heard him in the town. Lord, Lord, wasn't that a fish? When you hear the trumpet call, don't you turn the gospel down. Cause by the lesson of the gospel tale of Jonah. That was the four notes singing Jonah and the Whale. And they wham and they wham back over the... Oh, no. That was another seafood opera. I sweep the leaves off from under this part. 
suppose Molly's got all the doors barricaded and is pointing my shotgun at the chimney. I wish she wasn't so dead. Listen, lady, be reasonable. Hmm, must have company. I wonder who that is. Listen, sir. You make one more move toward that window and we bop you, see? Yeah. The rest of us, see? And we ain't taking no chances. Oh, dear. I wish McGee was here. Oh, my gosh. It's them convicts. They got Molly. What'll I do? What? Oh, I'll run next door and phone for the cops. over here in five minutes. Oh, hello, little girl. Will you ask your mom if I can use the phone? Quick. No. Oh, oh come on, you gotta. Why? It's, it's a matter of life and death. Hmm? Oh, come on, sis, quit stalling. Hurry up. Ask your mom if I can use the phone. I can't do it, I betcha. Well, why not? Oh, my mom isn't here. You're, well, who is here? Me. <laughs> Ain't there anybody? I mean, can't stop. Listen, sis, I'm coming in and use that phone. Okay, mister. Well, where is it? Where's what? The telephone, Dad. Right at the telephone. Ought to be here in the hall someplace. Where is it, sis? Hurry up. They took it out, I bet you. Oh. Listen, sis, this is urgent. i got to get to a telephone. Where's the nearest place I can telephone? Right here. Huh? we got a telephone. I thought... Dad, right if you said they took it out. Sure they did, I bet you. They took it out of the hall and they put it in the dining room. Oh. <laughs> Why does everything have to happen to me? Did you ever have the mumps? <laughs> no, I never had the mumps. Well, then everything hasn't happened to you, I <laughs> Please, sis, there's burglars in our house. I gotta call the police. Where's the telephone? In the dining room. Right there, you see? Oh. The nickel? Oh, no. Dad, Dad, if not a cent of change with me, and this would be a nickel phone. No, it isn't, mister. Well, why'd you ask me if I had a nickel? Hmm? Oh, oh, listen, sis. Let me make this phone call, and we'll discuss finances later. Oh, no, you don't. Huh? <laughs> no. When the other neighbors use our telephone, they give me a nickel. And one price call is the way I do business. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'll give you a nickel. I'll give you a dime. I'll give you a quarter. Here, give me that phone. Hello? 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 Oh, quiet, sis. I'm telephoning. Hello, operator. This is an emergency. Give me the police. Hey, you can have it for a penny. Hello, police station. This is Fibber McGee, 79 Wistful Vista. Hey, you You know them convicts that escaped? Well, they're in my house at 79 Wistful Vista, see? Hey, Listen, officer, get the squad cars out right away and tell them to take it easy because they got my wife in there with them. I'd have busted in there myself, but there was no use throwing my own life away. You can have it for a penny. <laughs> okay, officer, thanks, and tell them to hurry. I heard them through the door, and they're pretty desperate. Okay, officer. Go on. Where's my quarter, mister? Oh, I ain't got time now, sis. I'll see you later. Hmm? I said, don't bother me now. I'll tell you. I gotta get home. Okay, mister. But it seems to me that it takes a pretty despicable character to default on a business arrangement with a lady, particularly when she has afforded him every facility to restore his loved ones to the great American ideal of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, it's about time you got home, McGee. 
What are you doing with the policeman? Molly, are you, are you all right? I mean, he I... He told us them escaped convicts was in here, lady. Sure they were. I heard at least four tough guys talking in here not more than ten minutes ago. Why, McGee, you never... Oh, that. What happened, Molly? Oh, I was wishing you could have been here to hear him, McGee. Who, them convicts on the lamb? No, gangbusters on the radio. <laughs> We'll be back in just a moment. And now, your attention, please. These pleasant spring days were surely meant for enjoyment. And no sensible woman wants to stay in the house scrubbing floors when the warm sun is calling her out of doors. Let me remind you, then, that you can forget about scrubbing when your floors and linoleum are gleaming with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. You'll be glad every day when you see your beautiful, lustrous floors and discover that dirt can't stick to the shining glow coat polish. And don't neglect your porch floor. Do you remember how the dirt collected on it last summer? Well, just put a little glow coat on that porch floor and see how much cleaner it will stay. You know, of course, that glow coat requires no rubbing or buffing. It never streaks or smears. It dries in 20 minutes to a glossy polish that seals the cracks against dirt and stains. But be sure you get the real thing. G-L-O hyphen C-O-A-T. Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. The easy-to-use liquid polish that gives brighter luster, longer wear. Heavenly days, I haven't seen so many cops since the time I was crowned queen of the 14th precinct at the policeman's ball. <laughs> well, them cops were just an extra precaution, Molly. My first impulse was to rush in and clean them hoodlums up single-handed. Hmm. I'll bet you could have done it too, dearie. Oh, sure. Sure. Say I could. I was raised with a pretty tough gang back in Peoria, remember? That is, till they threw me out. What'd they throw you out for? They caught me carrying a handkerchief. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> visit the New York World's Fair, you'll be sure to see the 15 beautiful model homes in the town of tomorrow. On all the floors and woodwork of these homes, Johnson's Wax Polishes are used exclusively. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat at Racine, Wisconsin, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This is the National Broadcast.